What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Mario Kart Wii Custom Track Wiki Showcase, a series where I go through everything uploaded to the wiki and I talk about some of my most interesting findings. Today's episode is covering March 2022. There was again a pretty sizable amount of activity during the month of March, but I wanted to make sure that this showcase video wouldn't reach 40 minutes like my last February episode, mainly because I would rather these be bite sized 15 to 20 minute videos. I'll be covering another 20 things uploaded to the wiki during the month, but we'll tweak the format a bit to speed up the process. We'll cross that bridge when we get there though. Let's just jump right into the tracks. The first track we're going to be taking a look at is Snowpoint Valley by Multi Mario Kart DS, which was initially uploaded on the 3rd. Multi Mario Kart DS is a very interesting creator, as he doesn't upload tracks often, but he's made some incredible CTs like Dragon Burying Grounds, Volcano Canyon, and Niswo Desert, which just recently got added to CTGP, and rightfully so, might I add. Uh, this track in particular is a remake of an older track he made in 2012 called Glazed Valley. I always love when authors go back through their old tracks and polish them up for a newer audience, and this is a phenomenal remake. One thing I'll note right off the bat is that this doesn't look like any Nintendo track in the game, which is something I really appreciate. The only snow track in Mario Kart Wii is DK Summit, and this looks completely different with the ice section, the cave, and even the general snowy scenery. It's a really nice change of pace that sets the track apart. This is a simple track with a couple of twists and turns, tricks and wide areas, and this is a very effective, simple track. This doesn't linger on a specific idea too long, with the switch up from the twisting brown road section to the open area, to the tree filled part, to the wide cave area with sliding penguins, and ending off on the last straight with the slippery ice and big glaciers that you have to dodge. My favorite aspect about this track is the design, and I can imagine this being a really fun course against other people online because of the shortcuts and the potential for intense player to player interaction. The shortcuts are mainly at the start of the course, with the snow gap cut that's possible shroomless, and the path switch off road, which emphasizes the importance of playing around items in the latter half of the course. After the tree section, there is a lot of potential for item span and big ideas, for lack of a better term, in the open cave area. And it would be really fun to see how these items would come into play with the ice pillars, especially restricting the areas that racers could go. I can imagine some montage moments happening because of snipes off the wall, lap 3 directly before the finish line. The visuals are great, the design is great, the track is smooth and fun to drive, and the few obstacles like the upright trees, the penguins, and the ice pillars play into the track really well. Great stuff Multi Mario Kart DS, as always, I'm looking forward to your upcoming tracks and I'm glad you're still going at it. Up next we have Blizzard's Rise by Metabus, originally uploaded on the 5th of the month. Another ice themed course, but this time from a newer creator. This was made for the third edition of David Slane's First Come First Serve challenge that I mentioned in my first video. This is Metabus's second track, and you guys might be familiar with the first track he uploaded to the wiki, which was Banished Keep. It's simply one of the best tracks that came out in 2021, and really set a high standard for what was to follow from Metabus in the future. Luckily, that did not deter him from continuing to upload tracks, which is what I love to see. This track in particular takes place on a snowy mountaintop on the cliffside with a temple structure, and it is centered around the usage of half pipes. This is pretty similar to Snowpoint Valley in a way, being a simpler snow themed course, but the emphasis on design and shortcuts really sets this track apart. We already know that Metabus is a design centric creator from his first track, but it's still awesome to see how it comes into play on this very short course. The initial halfpipe section with the ramps, the numerous paths, and the off-road shortcuts off the bat adds a lot of meta to the course, and I especially love how satisfying it is to trek off the ramp onto the higher platform. The halfpipe around the 180 degree turn is always super satisfying to drive, like a consistent turn skip on Waluigi Stadium. And the ramp onto the lower platform with the trickable off-road cut makes the entire track exciting to play and would lead to some interesting as hell races online. I should note that the emphasis on design does not hinder the visuals whatsoever. The shadows here are really nice for one, and once again, as a snow course, this doesn't look like DK Summit, which really sets it apart visually. The integration of the temple for this snowy course is unique, and even the outdoor areas don't look like any Nintendo courses, or <laughs> Snowpoint Valley for that matter. In comparison to Banished Keep, this is much easier to digest, but the simpler design does not sacrifice any taste in my opinion. And as a side note, this dude uploaded the course to the wiki and labeled it a minor track. Seriously, this is a minor track for you Metabus? The standard is going to be so high that any major track that he drops will be celebrated like a holiday. Awesome stuff Metabus, I hope you stick around and keep making tracks since you are blessing the wiki right now. Our next track is an interpolation of a Super Mario Galaxy stage, Honey Hive Galaxy by The Veil, which initially released on March 9th. 
Of course, I had to include a Super Mario Galaxy track as the creator of Dark Matter Fortress, but this galaxy in particular is much bigger in scope than Bowser's Dark Matter plant was. I was very interested to see where the veil would take the track in terms of design. I was also interested by the fact that this is the veil's first custom track uploaded to the wiki, so we're dealing with another debut track. Apparently he had been working on this since 2019, which I mean, great job making it through to the end. 2019 doesn't seem like it was too far away, but that was before COVID hit. Damn. Anyways, this is a super interesting track because it retains a lot from the original Galaxy while still feeling like a cohesive course. It's very similar to the one Super Mario 64 stage that got turned into a track and was in Raid That Custom Track, though with many more creative liberties, luckily. The first turn is wild because it's a 270 degree turn basically, but there's no walls or anything separating the later turn from the earlier turn. I don't know if I explained that well, but you probably know what I mean from the video. You could skip the turn very easily, it just won't count the lap. It's an interesting concept for sure, probably not something for CTGP, but for the time being it would create a lot of interesting interactions in online settings. The fading texture used for the arrows is also cool, where it generally denotes where you're supposed to be going depending on your positioning. I really like the design's resemblance to the original stage, from the ramp through the middle of the galaxy to the big slide before the honey and flowers. The cannon thing is really funny because it's like 5 or 6 cannons stacked on top of each other, but it works. I really like the shaded tree hallway it drops you in as well, it looks really great. The ramp and the great section afterwards play and look really cool as well. Then the cannon into the long last turn with the flowing honey and the shortcut bring the whole track together surprisingly well considering the original source material. The visuals as a whole are truly magnificent, unique in the realm of Mario Kart Wii with bright, vibrant, high quality textures and stunning lighting in the sections I already mentioned. The assets and objects from Galaxy also serve to make this track stand out and convey the original Galaxy feel. The star bit item boxes are a really nice touch, the flying honey queen bats are funny, the skybox is the same one from Super Mario Galaxy, and the veil was able to figure out how to put the files together, which was something I couldn't figure out for Dark Matter Fortress, and the black hole object looks phenomenal. I'm not saying I'd steal the object from my track, I would never, but <sighs> just saying. I'd be willing to give a couple high fives for me to use it in Dark Matter Fortress. <laughs> but yeah, the track is in the beta version currently, so I'm sure many more design changes and updates are to come to polish the track up, but this is a really solid foundation and looks and plays great for a debut track. Nice work, The Veil. I'm looking forward to any future updates. The 38th edition of the Custom Track Jam took place during the month of March with the theme of Industrial. The results were uploaded on March 10th, and one of the tracks I chose to cover was the track that claimed second place, and you guys should be very familiar with the creator at this point. The track is Cargo Bay by Shorky. I think at this point, a Shorky track being in the video is a given, especially since he participates in every Custom Track competition basically. I'll explain why I enjoy his style so much with specifics from this track later on, but this plays second in a seriously good jam, probably one of my favorites in recent memory. Memory. Racers of the track drive on a cargo ship, on a dock, and around a lighthouse, but Shorky chose to focus on the gameplay of the track with many shortcuts and strats. Basically, if you guys know Volcanic Valley from CTGP, this is basically a cargo bay themed version of that, but with a more varied and compact design. In the realm of tracks that loop back on each other, I think this actually works quite well because the starting loop especially could realistically find first place, hyphen a dodge a bill or star from bottom spots when they land from the ramp. One of the things that concerns me about these kinds of tracks that loop onto each other is regarding how intuitive the track is on sections that cater to forwards and backwards gameplay. I feel like it's very easy to either make these sections too open and boring, or make them too complex and hard to interpret one way or the other. That's why I find it very impressive how intuitive this track is, at least for me. I was able to get everything down right away and sort of know where to trick and what to avoid so I don't start hitting walls when they're meant for the backwards paths. The design is really great overall, fun to drive, has great shortcuts and split paths, and makes sense in the context of the theme as well. The modeling especially shouldn't go unnoticed either. The crane structures, lighthouse, boat, and the large amount of shipping containers set the tone of the course perfectly. It makes you forget that this was all modeled from scratch with the 4 day time limit that these custom track jam courses have. The visuals also aid in setting the tone with unique textures that differentiate the track from any Nintendo course. I feel like this definitely goes for a Banished Keep vibe with the plethora of strategies to the track and I think it works really well here. This once again shows that Shorky has a knack for design and really focuses on it which really appeals to me because I used to approach tracks like this when I still made them. The main reason why I enjoy his style so much might sound weird at first, but the fact that he uses SketchUp for modeling might actually benefit the design here. SketchUp gets a lot of flack for being archaic in comparison to Blender or 3ds Max, and it's definitely limited in its scope. You can tell the difference between a SketchUp and a Blender track, but that doesn't automatically mean that SketchUp is worse at doing everything. 
Tracks that go for a more purposeful flat design with complex shore ideas tend to be more consistent with SketchUp modeling in my opinion, with many other shorty tracks being a good example. Banish Keep as well, which I believe was mostly modeled in SketchUp, but I could be wrong. Anyways, yeah, that's my little side tangent about SketchUp. Good stuff as always, Shorky. Cargo Bay wasn't the only track from the industrial themed jam I wanted to cover though. We also have the 5th place finisher, Cogwheel Chasm by Bree911. Bree is a creator I really like. I already talked about his Gloomy Castle update in the first episode, but he's made some of my favorite custom tracks ever. I love how he manipulates game files to do whatever he wants them to do. And that shows with this track as well. This is many moving cogs and pieces that open and close pathways over time. It's a simpler track, but there's so many innovative ideas presented here, and it's so wild to me that he came up with and made these objects with a stricter 4 day time limit. The initial massive gear that you can ride on and use as a bit of a slip path is really neat, and a good obstacle and pathway to create some interesting meta. The halfpipe moving texture is creative and not something I've ever really seen before. The row of turning gears is nice. Reminds me of, I want to say 3DS Bowser's Castle with its turning rod thing, but I'm not sure if there was another example from a Nintendo track that rotated both ways. Maybe 3DS Rainbow Road. Regardless, it's perfectly designed and would be something Nintendo would do for sure. The Toad's Factory conveyor with the sliding obstacles you have to avoid is really nice. I love how it challenges the racer to decide between using the lower platform and losing time or risk getting hit by the obstacle on the conveyor. I'd honestly make the obstacle even bigger to really add suspense in that section. The all black skybox doesn't get used often in the community, but it works perfectly for this track and adds character. Other than the fast section in the wide area being maybe a little too fast, this track is put together very well for a great design online. And that issue could be easily fixed by making those red grates rumble volcano rocks that crumble after laps 1 and 2. Bree would certainly know how to do that with his object expertise. If you haven't seen the industrial jam results, then this might be surprising as a 5th place finisher since it is really good, but like I mentioned before, this has got to be one of the best jams in a while. Tracks like Bowser's Magma Sanctum by Burge, Koopa Troopa Paluta by Lustio Winds, and Lana Ryu Mining Facility by Tarza, sorry if I botched that, were all really solid with almost all the ones I listed being debut tracks for the creators, but most also didn't release to the wiki. Still, I highly recommend checking out the results if you haven't already. Awesome stuff, Brie. Coming up next, we have a remake of a Mario Kart Wii track in Mario Kart Wii. Yep, this is Wii DK Summit by Squire Turbo, which released on the 15th of March. Squire definitely slowed down his output after last month when he released track after track after track, but he still released two this month, so clearly he's still motivated to keep things rolling, which is what I love to see. This version of DK Summit is based on the Mario Kart Tour version. I did check the Tour version just to see how identical it is, and yeah, this is the Tour version with distinct nighttime visuals that do a good job of differentiating the track from the original DK Summit. This is a hard track to gauge, simply because you can take it in many directions depending on what you view the track should be. Do you see this as an alternative or a replacement to the original DK Summit, or an updated version that should be better? I'm going to tackle this as an alternative because I doubt Squire would try and improve upon Nintendo tracks, or anyone else for that matter. It would be super funny to see a track that actually tries to go for a Nintendo course but better, objectively. Uh, the main question would be whether or not it would be added to CTGP. Regardless, that's not to say that this track is worse than the original DK Summit in every way. There are admirable aspects in some sections that I think play better, especially considering the fact that DK Summit is my least favorite track in Mario Kart Wii. The visuals for one I think are more detailed and interesting, the Jukable Canyon is a nice touch though I wasn't able to get it consistently, the mount section is 100% better than the original with smoother tricks and flat ramps which work so much better, and I kind of like the ending section more with how the snow was handled and how the shy guys feel less intrusive, though that opinion might be divisive so I'm not fully committing to it. The main source of controversy here from a competitive standpoint would be the change to the double cut meta since it is much easier to do with low slowdown with the current fence positioning and modeling. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, the slowdown on the original double cut adds some tension but I feel like it's mostly unfun otherwise. This might be too easy and the single cut basically doesn't exist anymore which is unfortunate, but I don't honestly think it matters that much. This track is just supposed to be a cool alternative to the original I believe, so the meta doesn't matter if the track wasn't going to be submitted to CTGP anyway. It would be interesting to see how this would be received if it were submitted to CTGP. It could be a really popular track, but who knows. The track is definitely quality, and I'm glad that Squire has been so motivated to continue making such amazing tracks during these months. Good stuff. Our next track, kinda, is a recreation of another Mario Kart 8 course. This is Wii U Animal Crossing by CPL, which was uploaded on the 16th of the month. I said this is kind of a track because despite being one page on the wiki, this is not one track. 
The download has a zip file with 4 SES files, and similar to the Mario Kart 8 version, you have an option to play all 4 seasons, spring, summer, winter, and fall. Each season looks and plays a little differently than the rest. For example, the winter version has snowman you have to dodge, and the spring version adds ramps, but with the same general base layout. I chose to play the spring version, but I will show a no clip preview of the other 3 versions as well. I should also mention that this was a commissioned custom track similar to ZPL's Parkway Boogie that I mentioned in the last video. I'm not sure if it was for the price of 4 tracks or just one, I imagine it's just the one with maybe a little bonus, but I will again leave his Ko-Fi page in the description if you guys would like to commission a track from him. Anyways, it is kind of wild to me that there's only two versions of Animal Crossing on the wiki, with the older version by Holland being a very early proof of concept of just the summer theme. The design has a lot of potential to work great on the Wii considering how flat it is, but I guess the idea of having all for seasons or choosing between one is too daunting. Regardless, ZBL approached this really well. By just making a zip file with all four versions with visual tweaks and a couple of gameplay changeups, it allowed for an easier track making process where you just approach each season separately instead of worrying about putting it together. The visuals in all the tracks are really good, and the base design is phenomenal as well. It drives very nicely and resembles the original well. I like the low tricks that you get off everything basically, especially the ramps in the spring section. Otherwise, there's not much else to add. This is a standard great track. Track. It would be cool to see a version with a heavy emphasis on KMP or LE code extensions where you can have all four versions in one file and it randomly generates a certain season, but I'm not sure that would be possible to randomize the textures on the base track. Maybe if you kept the same KCL in every version and you had an object containing the entire course's visual information and it chooses between the four objects, that could work, but that's just my mind wandering and this is great as it is. Great work as always ZPL. Up next, we're going to be shifting our focus away from tracks again for a quick segment on a new game mode. This is Bomb on Blast Revolution, which was made by Zeme and Ro, and uploaded to the site on the 26th. Game modes are something I've always had an interest in, so I thought I would cover this creation since I hadn't heard many people talk about this. As you might expect, since this is based off the Bomb on Blast battle mode in Double Dash and 8 Deluxe, you can only receive bomb bombs in this mode, with the time limit reduced to 2 minutes and the bomb bombs also shown on the minimap. I believe this is Zeme's only release on the wiki, but I am familiar with Ro who is a general modder for Mario Kart Wii and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Versions of this Bomb on Blast game mode were made for things like Variety Pack and Cuber Luigi CT Pack, but since this one is new and in an alpha version, I'm guessing this one might be pursued more heavily in the future, and I want to shine a spotlight on it now in case anyone was interested. Regardless, what do I think about this game mode? It's fun for sure, definitely something I'd love to play online if I got the chance. It is pretty early in development, the boxes still show that you can pull other items, but I didn't actually pull any other ones from the roulette, so I believe it's fine. The addition of the bombs on the minimap is a really Really nice touch that deviates this mode from the original battle modes, and I hope to see more of those little tweaks like that in the future. This really shows that Bomb on Blast would have been a really fun game mode in vanilla Mario Kart Wii, and it's unfortunate that we only got the two modes that we currently have. But I see a lot of promise in this take, and if the online component of this game mode was pursued to give this occasional online sessions, I think that would be really fun. It could encourage Bean to include it in CTGP as well, which I think would be great as a solid simple addition alongside a toggle between the normal battle modes and countdown. I think all this really needs is the item box roulette only showing bombs, and maybe the possibility to stack bombs like in the Mario Kart 8 game mode. I'll leave a link to the Discord server for this mod in case you guys want to try it out. I'm looking forward to seeing a distribution with some custom battle stages as well in the future. Good stuff, Zeman Row. Side note, I planned on making a video ranking all custom game modes a while ago since there aren't too many and I think it's an unappreciated part of the wiki. If you guys do want to see that, then let me know in the comments and I might try the idea again. Coming up next, we have Wario's Abandoned Casino by Shorky, which was released on the 30th of March. This was originally created for the 39th edition of the CT Jam, which had the theme of Casino, but was not submitted due to technical issues. This was technically released after the Jam courses, but I'll be covering the Casino Jam in the April video, since that's when the results were posted. This track takes place in a half-built casino dedicated to Wario, with a construction site since, you know, it's abandoned and unfinished. You're welcome for the commentary. Anyways, yeah, it's another short track so it's great. Instead of going for the massive design again like on Cargo Bay, he opted for a simpler design with some twists, turns, split paths, and ramps. A pretty straightforward loop, but the amount of detail in some of these sections is pretty crazy. The casino itself looks stunning and I love the smoky atmosphere with everything falling apart. This is a very small detail that I appreciate, but the finish line is curved up and you can trick off it. It's super satisfying. 
The casino itself is modeled and textured really well with good obstacles and unique visuals. The incorporation of the construction site is also creative and really neat. It's interesting to see Shorky go for an industrial theme for both of his tracks this month with the realistic theming definitely working in favor of this track. The split path in the design is nice and could lead to some cool player to player interactions online with pow dodges hopping off the top path or innovative shroom usage, that's how I see it personally. The ramp in the off-road afterwards is pretty satisfying to take shroomless and I believe it's faster. It's a cool little strat to go for once you feel more confident in the track. The detail once again is really incredible and this would have popped off in the jam results if it were submitted. Really, it just makes me want to see Shorky attempt to make a track with no competition in mind and no constraints, it would be a sight to see for sure. To be fair, I understand why he hasn't though cause I went through the exact same thing when I was still making tracks. I haven't uploaded a course that wasn't made for a competition in 3 years. The competitions really do compel you to make tracks. Regardless, amazing stuff here Shorky. The last track that I would like to cover in depth is Lakeside Pier by Potato Man 44 which was uploaded on the 31st. Potato Man is a very interesting creator. You might remember some of his tracks from CT Review number 3, Island Circuit and Tyler Circuit. For the most part I've kept up with the many tracks he's uploaded since and I'd say he's definitely improved from those humble beginnings. He tends to go for very quick and short designs but this track caught my attention for a couple of reasons and I'll get into them now. First reason is that this might be my favorite Potato Man design so far out of all of his tracks. This course has two distinct sections, that being the boardwalk and the grass section. The boardwalk has a lot of cool shroom cuts that cut off a couple edges, along with shroomless cuts that you can take to go very fast and super satisfying the time trial. It would be interesting to see the meta surrounding the track online because of this, along with the fact that there is a lap 3 shroom shortcut you can take when hopping off the last ramp. The normal grassy section is also a needed change of pace and I really appreciate its inclusion. The ramp and zapper combination is neat, and the grass cut at the end does add some more identity to the track, though the turn that it skips is very tight and I'd wind it a bit. The second thing that caught my attention here was the visuals because they're distinct and I like them quite a bit. The water texture, the boost panel texture, the boardwalk, and the grassy section as a whole are great examples. It doesn't emulate any one Nintendo track very much, and I think it adds a lot of character to a track with more generic theming. I mean, Lakeside Pier is not the most exciting track name to be frank, but it works for sure. My favorite part about this track is how some cuts feel unintentional but work as if they are intentional. That's probably my favorite part of tracks in this game as a whole. Grumble Volcano is my favorite Mario Kart Wii track mainly because of how satisfying the rock hop is, but it could not have been an intentional cut on Nintendo's end. Mushroom Gorge is my second favorite, and I don't believe Nintendo intended for the gap cut to be a thing, though that is more debatable admittedly. GBA Bowser Castle 3 is probably my third favorite, and that has many kinds of unintentional cuts near the ramp section. The benefit that comes with custom tracks is that after these cuts are discovered, they can be changed to better fit the meta. On a more personal level, I never realized while designing Dark Matter Fortress that you can make the last cut of the track where you hop over the last turn straight onto the last straightaway from the wooden ramp, but I really like how that cut plays into the track. Linking it back to Lakeside Pier, I can't say for sure if every shroom cut and shroomless cut is intentional on Potato Man's part, but that makes it better because it truly feels like you're discovering the track in its fullest form. I'll say this now without going through his entire discography, this is my favorite Potato Man track, even if it's on the simpler side. I think the design works great, it's fun to time trial, and it would be fun to play online, and I really hope Potato Man follows the style with future tracks that have various sections and cool shortcuts. Great stuff, man. Alright, that's all for the main segment of this showcase, but now it's time to move on to a new segment that I would like to introduce to these videos. This is the rapid fire portion where I go through some really great tracks that I'd like to draw attention to that I have little to comment on. I realized there were many tracks from last month that I wanted to shout out, but I didn't have enough time to give the track its own segment with a formal introduction and everything else. This should hopefully shine a light on some more creators who made some really solid offerings that I didn't have much to say on. Again, the tracks I choose to talk about and where I place them in each segment is not fully indicative of how I view the track quality wise, it's mainly depending on how much I have to say regarding the track. Let's get started. GBA Cheeseland by ZPL. ZPL has attempted to make a Mario Kart 8 version of Cheeseland before, but this being the third attempt from scratch, and his versions keep getting better and better. This feels like a more realized version of Cheeseland with the perfect design to the unique and stunning visuals and background scenery. The objects play into all these elements perfectly as well. I've always wanted a Mario Kart 8 version of Cheeseland and Mario Kart Wii, and this has certainly scratched my itch. 
N64 Frappe Snowland by Cats for Life. Similar to GBA Bowser Castle 1 from the last episode, this version of N64 Frappe Snowland is very unique visually and I can commend Cats for Life for taking that risk. Easily my favorite aspect of this course is that I believe it's themed around new Super Mario Bros Wii with the Luigi penguin suit statue and the mushroom and one-up houses decorating the mountainous background. I love the idea of incorporating 2D Mario elements into Mario Kart Wii custom tracks, for example Coin Heaven. If you're a fan of Frappe Snowland then you'll probably want to try this one out. Snazz Choco Island 2 by Slime Server. The main idea behind this track was to be a complete revamp of the original SNES track with a distinct restructured wide area. It makes complete sense once you see the loop in action, yet it needed some out of the box thinking from Slime Server's end which is why I love it so much. The streamless cut in the section and the visual switch up in the cave section afterwards are also highlights for me. The rest of the track is really solid too and goes to show how good Slime Server's modeling capabilities are from the cave to the smoothness of the roads. Sprinkle Circuit by Aegis406 and Bryce. Something that I hear pretty common in the competitive scene is that some people miss the old style of custom tracks, essentially SketchUp tracks from 2015. It's an idea I understand but don't agree with since I think people will always look back at older tracks with rose tinted glasses. But this track by Idris and Bryce is one that I think anybody into that older style of CT creation should be into because this has a modern and impeccable design with that signature SketchUp flair. The middle section with multiple paths, including the stream shortcut using the bouncy cookie, is very well thought out and the whole track utilizes the candy theme very well. Had this been added to CTGP in 2015, I think this could have stayed in the pack much longer than the average 2015 track due to how fun this is to play. A little bit of lag is a warning, but definitely check this out if you're interested. A very cool track from the two fastest Mushroom Gorge glitch players. Not related unless you count the bouncy cookie, but still an interesting tidbit of information that I wanted to share. Prismatic Parkway by Kiwi Power Green. This is another original course that I thought was really neat design wise with its vast amount of shortcuts and design switch ups. Despite being in the rapid fire section, this is definitely the track I time trial the most due to how genuinely fun this was to play, and I don't have much else to say beyond that really. This has some really nice online potential in my opinion due to how the cuts play into the overarching design, though it could turn into the question of who has shrooms on lap 3 to take the ending cut, but that's okay. If you guys are interested, I have a video of my fastest time on this track over on my second channel. If any of you guys manage to beat my time, I'll give you a shout out or something, I don't know. It's a decent time I think, but definitely not impossible to beat. Try and beat it if you want to. DS Shroom Ridge by Squire Turnbolt. This is the second Mario Kart 8 esque version of Shroom Ridge since CPLs came out last month, and I like both takes equally but for different reasons. This has a more cartoony art style to the presentation that I actually think is pretty admirable and sets this track apart from the other realistic looking Shroom Ridges. The shortcuts are the big highlight for me though. The one grass cut in front of the tunnel is now a one shroom shortcut. If you shroom off the ramp and over the pipe, there's a hidden mushroom that bounces you right into that tunnel. And there's another bouncing pipe trick after the tunnel that skips a turn too. Both shortcuts are super satisfying and intuitive in my opinion. They really add some meta to the track that Sneaky's version in CTGP doesn't have. GBA Sky Garden by Luca. Now might be a good time to mention that I have not played the new Mario Kart 8 DLC or Mario Kart Tour for that matter, so I have a disconnect from those tracks in those games. I do plan on getting the Mario Kart 8 DLC eventually, but <laughs> that game sucks eggs. Anyways, if you're looking for a Switch version of Sky Garden to play in Mario Kart Wii, here it is. It's pretty fun, the bouncy mushrooms are great, and the turns are smooth. It's up to you whether you like this style of Sky Garden more than the original on the Game Boy Advance, but in my opinion, this is as good as it gets in one of the styles, and I still think it would be fun to play in distributions against others. Snaz Bowser Castle 2 by Kawaii Dawn. This is another one of those Nintendo Track remakes that completely revamped the design to, you know, make a SNES track interesting and not flat. This definitely succeeds in making a fun version of Bowser Castle 2. The ramps and the height changes along with the new blended Bowser Castle visuals makes this a joy to drive. A tighter design will help in the future, but I'm not here to review any tracks, I'm here to showcase them, and this definitely deserves to be showcased. I'm hoping to see more tracks from Kawaii Dawn soon since they're a very new creator and they've made some solid tracks with this being a great example. Wii U Mario Circuit by The Gaming Bram. I knew Bram was making every Mario Kart 8 track for the Wii, but I still couldn't have expected this track to be remade. I mean, half the track is supposed to be upside down, how did he do it? He simply made the track into two layers, with the bottom layer having the anti-gravity texture and being in heavy shadow. It works great on the Wii and has at least some semblance to the original. This remake thoroughly impressed me. If you wanted this track in Mario Kart Wii, 
I will need you to explain yourself and where your priorities lie, but this is a somehow quality version for you. And finally, Wii U Twisted Mansion by The Game Ram. One of the things that I really like about this rapid fire showcase idea is that I can briefly mention updates to tracks I previously covered without an entire segment reiterating information. This update to Twisted Mansion is magnificent. The updated textures are beautiful, especially in the water section, the smoother collision for the road is appreciated, and the introduction of new objects like the booze and the swinging chandeliers are incredible additions to a track that I already previously recommended to you guys in a more primitive state. Check this one out, again, it's really nice. You guys might have noticed a pattern with the tracks I discussed here, and yes, I will admit retro tracks do not excite me as much as completely original designs, even though I completely understand that making a retro track is still not an easy job whatsoever. If you guys like this idea and want to see it in future episodes, let me know in the comments. Alright, that's all the tracks, now let's hop straight into the awards. The award for the best debut track of the month is going to go to SMG Honey Hive Galaxy by The Veil. Vale. There were quite a number of really solid debut tracks this month, mostly coming from the jams, but I really love the creative direction that Veil vale took here and I have to give props for being dedicated to finishing this for so long. Great stuff. Moving on, the award for the best retro track of the month is going to go to DS Shroom Ridge by Squire Turnbolt. There were so many cool retro tracks that I showcased in this video, but this is the one that I think improved upon the original track the most, and I could see myself wanting to play Shroom Room Ridge in CTGP if it was this version, which is wild to me. It's a testament to how good Squire is at making tracks. Up next, the award for the longest I time trialed the track this month goes to Prismatic Parkway by Kiwi Power Green. I definitely sunk a good chunk of hours figuring this one out with a couple sessions, and that's as someone who does not time trial. So this is definitely one I'd recommend trying out for any actual time trialers who are interested. And finally, the award for the best track of the month is gonna go to Cargo Bay by Shorky. This is the track that simply impressed me the most with how phenomenally grand the design is and how well it works. Incredible stuff again, Shorky. And there it is. March's video, hopefully before April is done. My exams are officially over, so I should be able to get these videos out sooner with other kinds of videos as well, so stay tuned for that. As always, track links and author pages are linked in the description if you guys want to check them out and support the creators in these videos. If you like this video, give it a goddamn like right now, that way I know you're a real fan. And with that being said, thanks for watching, and peace out.